and uh, it's my time to share my presentation, which is something that we tried uh, a few time, a few um, months ago. I mean, actually years ago, which is uh, treatment of uh, an auricular lymphangioma by ablation. Uh, I, can you see my screen? Is it okay? Okay, so. Uh, this is my hospital, which is uh, an 800 uh, university hospital in Athens called Atikon Hospital. And uh, this is our case. This is a young boy which uh, came to the hospital and uh, he had a big hematoma uh, behind the ear with a, a palpable mass. Uh, he's a 12 year old. And he had a history of a lymphangioma in the area already operated uh, some time ago. So in this case, uh, he was operated when he was eight years old. The lymphangioma relapsed and uh, the parents uh, refused to do a second uh, surgery after the relapsation because they, they felt that uh, this would create more problems. And he stayed untreated since. And he comes at 12 years old with this palpable mass. And now this lymphangioma is bleeding in the outside area because of the stretch of the skin. And uh, you can see the recent signs of bleeding. And uh, this is the ultrasound, which you can see this uh, form of uh, uh, many uh, lymphatic overgrowths with septas inside, uh, with a lot of clusters. So the question is how we were going to treat this uh, if we could do anything percutaneous. And uh, as you can see, we did a Doppler control. There is no high vasculature in the area. It's all uh, liquid. So what we're talking about is an endothelial uh, vascular lesion from the lymphocytes, which is a lymphangioma and it's a benign disease. Uh, the treatment options are conservative, you do nothing, then uh, you risk the deformity and the peripheral bleeding, or you can do the different uh, sclerotherapy treatments, which is from alcohol, doxorubicin, and different OK, and different other uh, bleomycin and other devices. But when you treat with these injectable devices, you have risk of fistulas, chemical agents, skin necrosis, etc. And of course, there is the possibility of surgery, but surgery has always the risk of relapse, scaring, infection, and palsy. So we thought a little bit about how we're going to treat this. And there are a few papers we find about cystic hygromas, uh, which were treated by ablation with RF ablation. So we thought, why not to try to ablate that lymphocele uh, areas and try to destroy the tissue in between by ablation. And in order to do that, we thought about what are we doing in thyroid cancers and thyroid lesions. And we uh, used the classical described from back a few years ago, uh, the moving shot technique. So we prepped the area with prophylactic antibiotics. In the first case, we went for general anesthesia because we did not know how much pain the patient will have. Uh, and we used a radiofrequency probe, a seven millimeter probe with a thermal active tip in order to uh, do the ablation as we would do with a thyroid ablation technique. And you can see the probe here coming inside the lesion and uh, ablating the area. Uh, once the image is there uh, and uh, we, we are moving forward and backwards in order to ablate and you can see the formation of the echo uh, tip areas which are doing the ablation uh, and the formation of bubbles uh, which are, uh, are created there and we uh, moved to, as I said with the uh, shooting uh, technique back and forward in order to get the maximum effect inside those lesions and again uh, we treated first the deeper part and then we went and treated the superficial part with the same moving shot uh, technique and ablation. Uh, we tried to uh, break as many septums as we could uh, and we tried to ablate as much as we can and these were the final images where you can see that there is uh, a lot of uh, destroyed tissue in the area and inflammated tissue in the area uh, where we control with Doppler. There was no signs of active bleeding but there was a lot of uh, active septas 
and uh, this is the uh, treatment afterwards we stopped and uh, we recontrolled one month later uh, and actually this has come completely down there were a, quite a little bit in small cystic areas you can see the scarring from the previous surgery when he was eight years old still in the back of the ear but the actual mass uh, that was there has completely uh, uh, subsided and this is uh, one year later there are a few uh, cystic areas uh, on the second exam that we did one year later so one year later at the follow-up there is this little formations and this is how the complete mass has disappeared and uh, this is how we started this is how the lesion uh, evolution was and this is the uh, final image that we were actually being able to completely uh, make this um, lymphocele uh, regress. And actually now it's for the plastic surgeon just to bring the ear back in its original uh, position. Uh, this is our next case uh, that we did. Uh, actually, a uh, same kind of lympho, uh, lymphangioma in the neck. Now the ENTs send us these cases to ablate and uh, minimize the volume in order to be followed up then by surgery which is much easier with a very smaller uh, smaller lesion so perhaps i don't know uh, when you have an ablation you want to ablate everything but in this case it seemed uh, to work and uh, we had a very good uh, um, results with this type of ablation and this is our team and i would like to thank you very much for listening to me